good evening uh, to all the brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank uh, our Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving the eternal day in our life uh, to discuss his wonderful words of life. So today we are going to study a very, very important topic. You see, so uh, our Lord Jesus gave actually two symbols. Uh, one symbol is the Lord's memorial supper the breaking of the bread and partaking of the wine. And the next and a very primary importance symbol is uh, the baptism. So today we are going to study what is the meaning of baptism. Generally, uh, what is the thought uh, regarding baptism, if you see, many people, uh, you see, <coughs> believe that uh, baptism, uh, you see, is uh, taken uh, to show that you are repented and you are turned to God, you see, so you accepted uh, Christ, so you left all other uh, gods as gods, and you accepted Jesus as a savior, hence uh, forsaking all the sinful activities, and turning unto God is uh, a sign where we saw that, uh, you see, baptism. So baptism is understood to be a sign, you see, where we actually turn to God, by leaving all our sinful habits and activities. And still, uh, some people have uh, other, uh, you see, idea that once if we go from one church to other church, uh, you see, we need to take uh, <coughs> baptism. You see, so once if we join uh, our one denomination from other denomination, we need to take, uh, you see, baptism. Dear brethren, <coughs> you see, so if you don't, if you don't take baptism, what will happen? You see, the thought is that uh, if you don't take baptism, there is no salvation. So you will be turned to hell where you will be tortured eternally. You see, because of this uh, doctrine about hell and uh, uh, torture, hellfire, what they did was that, uh, you see, in the dark ages, we studied about the period of Antichrist, during that period, and they came out with a thought of child baptism because you see if the child dies uh, prematurely even before coming to the mode of baptism you see then unfortunately you see because of uh, not taking immersion you see the child uh, will be suffering in hell so hence they came up with the idea of child baptism then after uh, many more years, uh, they thought, uh, you see, small babies uh, die, you see, small babies uh, die just uh, living for a few days. So what about them? You see, there's no salvation for them. Now, if they don't take immersion, then they came up with the idea of uh, infant baptism. You see, they gave baptism for the child as soon as they were born, you see, and uh, uh, you see, in, uh, baptism means uh, what actually means in the Bible is that you are completely immersed in the water. <coughs> you see, you are completely dissolved in the water. Okay. Then, how can a newborn child be immersed in water? That's practically not possible. Hence, uh, they decided to have sprinkling baptism. You see, we can't have immersion. So, let us give a sprinkling baptism for a child. So, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, if they sprinkle water, that is considered as baptism. Okay. But after the child's baptism, till the child comes to a complete uh, maturity where he can understand everything individually <clears throat> by himself, uh, they used to appoint God Father and God Mother for the child's development in a spiritual way. So, the responsibility of uh, spiritual growth of the complete child, it depends uh, you see, completely upon this God Father and the God Mother. So, it is their responsibility to teach them, to nourish them spiritually. You see, so hence, uh, you see, this child baptism was given. And uh, you see, in some places, even the authority was given to doctor. Because seeing the child uh, die, only the doctor can identify in how many, you see, uh, moments or uh, within few minutes uh, when the child will pass away. So, Doctors were given the authority to baptize the child if they think that the child is going to pass away, you see, in a baptism. 
So then you say, uh, how many times uh, baptism has to be taken? So some people uh, take it three times. Why? Because Jesus told to take uh, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. So three times baptism has to be taken. So people take uh, three times. <coughs> huh? And still, uh, some people take it seven times. Why seven times? You see, because Naman took baptism how many times? Seven. Uh, it actually immersed, it did not take baptism. You see, so he immersed uh, and he was cleansed after dipping uh, seven times. So similarly, many people think that, oh, seven times uh, <coughs> we need to, you see, uh, immerse and dip, uh, you see, in uh, uh, water. So some people take seven times. Okay. Now, I want to know from uh, individually, uh, every one of you, what is the thought of baptism? What is the meaning of baptism as per you all? Okay. Joel Buddha. <coughs> what is your idea about baptism? What does baptism mean? Joel Buddha, are you there? Yes, brother. Uh, to believe Christ. Okay. And repent. Okay. Repent from what? Uh, from uh, our sins. Okay. So, and take baptism. Okay, good. Uh, Munjal sister, do you have any idea about baptism? Do you know what it is? To follow the footstep of Jesus. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Pro Minister, Amar Brother. Uh, being new in Christ and be committed. Okay. Amar Brother, what's your uh, thought? Um, yes, uh, to offer our whole life to Jesus. Okay, thank you. So, generally, the thought about baptism is that, uh, you see, the baptism has to be taken once we accept Christ as our Savior. So, after accepting Christ as our Savior, we take uh, baptism. So once uh, by taking baptism, you see, what happens is that all the sins, uh, you see, which were committed uh, before accepting Christ, uh, you see, those all the sins are completely washed away. You see, as we immerse in the water, you see, as we go inside the water, see, and come up new, so all our uh, old uh, sins are all uh, gone away. So we come out a new, you see, that is a general uh, thought. Okay. Okay. If baptism means uh, for the remission of sins, that uh, repentance to turn to Christ. Okay. But do you think uh, that after baptism, nobody commits sin? Yes. Everybody commits sin. Even after baptism. Then how about that one? How about the sins uh, which uh, one commits? after baptism. Now, what about them? You see, now what about uh, those sins? Uh, does it mean that we need to take baptism every day? Cleanse ourselves? Uh, huh? No. <clears throat> Let us see what the Bible says, you see, for the cleansing of our sin. What the Bible says for our repentance. What is required for our repentance? What is actually required for our cleansing of sins. Read 1 John 1 7. 1 John 1 7. Romister, can you read 1 John 1 7? Just a second, brother. Ah. My voice is okay? Is my voice clear? Uh, it's a bit uh... slow. No? No? Oh, it's slow. Okay. Now, now, how is it? I think now it's okay. 
Now it's okay, everybody, in voice? Yes, yes sir, it's audible, yes, it's clear. Okay, good. Okay, then, please continue. Sister, please, can you read? Okay, brother. Okay, brother. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ is his son cleaneth us from all sin. Ah, you see? So what is that which cleanses us of all our sins, which forgives and clears us of all our sins? You see, the Bible says it is the blood of Christ. It is not baptism, dear brethren, that cleanses us of our sin. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Then why do people believe that baptism is for the remission of sins, is for repentance? <clears throat> because John the Baptist gave this baptism. Let us read this incident, <clears throat> Matthew 3.11. Amar brother, can you read Matthew 3.11? <clears throat> Uh, brother, can you read Matthew 3 7? 3 11, sorry. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that Commit after me uh, is uh, my mightier than I. Ah, who yes. John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water unto what? <clears throat> unto repentance. Okay. Now, here John the Baptist gave baptism. When he was giving baptism, he clearly said that his baptism was for the baptism of repentance. <clears throat> okay. Now, you can see in verse 6, it says, the people, you see the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers, you see the tax collectors, everybody came and they confessed their sins and they repented. And to show their repentance, they took baptism in water. Read verse 6. <clears throat> Amar brother, read verse 6 also. And were baptized yeah, of sure. in Jordan, confessing their sins. Mm, confessing yeah, their sins. They took baptism. How? By confessing their sins. You see, by showing that they have repented from sins. You see, and it is the same baptism that uh, the apostles also gave to the people of Israel. You see, let us read John 4 chapter was 1 and 2. Uh, Muna sister, can you read John 4, chapter verse 1 and 2? When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. Okay. Yeah, the disciples of Jesus baptized everybody in the same baptism of repentance. But note the words. Here it says that Jesus did not baptize anybody. Not clearly. He said Jesus did not baptize, but all the disciples baptized others in the baptism of repentance. You see, even on the day of Pentecost, you know, when Peter spoke and 3,000 people got converted, all these 3,000 people they repented for their sin. You see, they repented what they have done against Christ. And they took this baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of their sins. Let us read Acts 2.38. <clears throat> Joel Buddha, please read Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Do you can see? You see? Repent and be baptized for what? For, for you see? For forgiveness of sins. You see? This is what the people of Israel did on the day of Pentecost. Okay. Now, till now we are clearly observed that all the scriptures clearly tells that the baptism is for the baptism of repentance. Repentance from what? <clears throat> you see? Repentance from our sin. You see, for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins, that you turn to God, you see. Okay, then <clears throat> what is the meaning, you see, of Matthew 3.15? And why did Jesus take baptism? You see, if baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, why did Jesus take baptism? Was Jesus a sinner? Tell me, was Jesus a sinner? No. Then why did he take baptism? You see, if Jesus is not sinner, he took baptism from the hands of John the Baptist, who was giving the baptism of repentance, who was giving the baptism for remission of sins. Then why did Jesus take this uh, baptism? The baptism for the remission of sins. Uh, the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the baptism of repentance. Why did Jesus take? <clears throat> you see, so today, this is our subject. We will see clearly what actually baptism means in the Bible. You see, actually, uh, this is what the question John the Baptist also asked to Jesus. Read Matthew 3.15. Joel Buddha, read Matthew 3.15. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill our righteousness that he suffered him ah, but read verse 14 also brother if you don't mind 14 and 15 brother Fourteen and 15 brother But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh -huh. Then he suffered him. Yes, he suffered him. Here, John the Baptist also questioned the same thing to Jesus. How is that you are taking baptism from me? Actually, I should be taking baptism from you. You see? And uh, at that moment, Jesus did not speak anything nor gave any clarification. But Jesus simply said, suffer it to be so now. Let it be. Let it be. Allow it uh, for now. <clears throat> you see? By doing this, I am fulfilling all the righteousness of God. Then John the Baptist loved. Okay, now this is our main point. Why Jesus took baptism? Okay, and why John the Baptist, uh, you see, prohibited Jesus to take this baptism? <clears throat> okay, now first of all, we should say John the Baptist gave baptism for whom? You see, John the Baptist actually gave the baptism for the Jewish people, for the Israel people. You see, because John the Baptist was actually preparing the way for Jesus Christ. Jesus, uh, you see, had come there and he was opening the door for the heavenly salvation. You see, and John the Baptist proclaimed, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The heavenly salvation, that selection is at hand. You see, read Matthew 3rd chapter 2nd verse. <coughs> Muna sister, can you read Matthew 3 2? And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
You see, repent. He again mentioned repent. Why? Kingdom of heaven, heavenly salvation, selection is going on. Therefore, you repent. Then verse 7 and 8, sister. Uh. <clears throat> but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of pipers who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. You see, again he said, uh, you see, to the Pharisees and Sadducees, these are the sinners who came for uh, baptism. He, he said, you see, bring forth uh, fruit, uh, you see, for repentance. Therefore, his baptism was given to the Jewish people, <coughs> the Pharisees, Sadducees, the Israel people, for repentance. Why? Why particularly giving to the Jewish people? Because the Jewish people, we know very well, they were under the law. God had delivered them from the land of Egypt and brought them to the land of Canaan. And at Mount Sinai, God gave them the law covenant. They were bound to God by that covenant, you see. And you know, all the people of Israel were already baptized into Moses. <coughs> you see, everybody thinks that the John the Baptist baptism is the first baptism. No. All the Israel people, Israel as a nation was completely baptized when they came out of Egypt and passed through the Red Sea. That is their first baptism. Read 1 Corinthians 10 chapter 1 and 2. Romy sister, please read 1 Corinthians 10 chapter 1 and 2. <coughs> Now the first Corinthians ten chapter one and two. Okay, brother. Now the Palestines fought against yeah. Israel. First yeah. Corinthians. You are reading Chronicles. <laughs> New Testament. First Corinthians ten chapter one and two. Sorry, brother. I'll... Ah, it's okay, no, no. Okay, somebody else can read. Gopal brother, you there? Okay, Joel brother, you there? Yes, brother. I, ah, okay, I will read. Chapter one and two, brother. Okay, brother. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud in the sea. Ah, all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud. And you see, you see, the whole nation of Israel were already baptized into Moses. That means they were supposed to be obedient to the law, you see, and become the disciples of Moses. They were already baptized, you see. And, you know, uh, but uh, the people of Israel were never obedient to the law. They violated the law. Hence, uh, this baptism of repentance was given only by John the Baptist, only to the Jewish nation, only to the Jewish people and not to other people because they were already baptized into Moses, accepting the terms and conditions of the law that they would be obedient to God. But once they violated, to show that uh, their violation was not, uh, you see, willful, you see, to show that their sin against God was not willful, hence, uh, to show that they repented uh, and turned back to God, they took the baptism of John the Baptist, and this was applicable only to the nation of Israel. Therefore, if you see, even Apostle Paul who was a Jew, you see, once when he came to Christ, uh, he took the same baptism. Because he had committed sin by persecuting the church, by violating God's law. Read Acts 22.16. <clears throat> Acts 22.16. Joel, brother, can you read? And now, why tarriest thou, arise, 
and be baptized and washed away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Ah, you see, be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling in the name of the Lord. You see, therefore, dear friend, Apostle Paul took the baptism, same baptism. But this was applicable only to the nation of Israel. Till when? Till not, this is not forever. Till only the 70 weeks of favor was there for the Jewish people. So there is a prophecy about uh, the Jewish favor in Daniel 9 chapter. God willing, we will study all these things in the coming classes. You see, special favor was given to the nation of Israel. You see, a special favor of 70 weeks. So in this 70 weeks only, the Messiah was supposed to come to Israel and three and a half years to purify the nation of Israel and anoint the most holy. And after that one three and a half years, you see, uh, they were only to accept the Jewish people into Christ. So until the 70 weeks of favor was not over, you see, neither Jesus Christ nor any of the apostles turned to the Gentiles. Remember, you see, once a Gentile woman, a Canaan woman came and begged to Jesus, Lord, please heal my daughter. What did Jesus say? I am not sent to any other nation, but I am sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus clearly mentions. He said, that means Jesus came only to the Jewish nation because special favor was given to the Jewish nation. God had fixed it in a prophecy. So, this uh, baptism of repentance was applicable only to the Jewish nation until the 70 weeks are over. You see, but once the 70 weeks are over, even this baptism is not applicable to the Jewish people. Dear brethren, <coughs> you see, therefore, once the 70 weeks were over, you know what happened? Uh, you see, the apostles turned to the Gentiles to preach the truth to them and bring more Gentiles to the truth. Uh, you see, so God first gave the opportunity to the Jewish people once the Jewish people rejected, God turned to the Gentiles. Read Acts 13.46. Munaf sister, can you read Acts 13.46? When Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing a put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. You see, you judge yourself unworthy, therefore we turn to the Gentiles. Until such time, you see, God never turned to the Gentiles. So, the first opportunity was given to whom? For the Jewish people. Once they rejected, God turned to the Gentiles. Sister, read Acts 15, 14 also. <clears throat> Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Ah, to take out a people out of his name. That's how God uh, turned to the Gentiles. You see, dear brother, you know, it is God's plan. You see, the promise which God made to Abraham is like a beautiful holy tree. You see, the Jewish nation was this holy tree. You see, the root of it was the Abrahamic promise. You see, so this olive tree was supposed to bring good olive fruits. But unfortunately, this did not bring uh, the good fruits. Uh, therefore, what God did was that God cut off some of the branches. You see, read Romans 11, 17 and 20. <coughs> Romister, you have the Bible with you? Are you able to read? Yes, yes, brother. Okay, Romans 11, chapter 17 and 20. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert preferred in among them, and with them, but takest of the fruit uh, and fatness of the olive trees. Ah, olive see, tree. Uh, what did you say? You see, they were broken off uh, 
you see so that the wild olive trees were grafted in you see this olive tree some of the branches were taken off why because the wild olive trees can be grafted in now oh, why was uh, some of the jewish people were taken off what is the reason read verse 20 sister now read verse 20 <clears throat> well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. Ah, because of unbelief, they were broken off. You see, they were cut off only because of unbelief. So what happened? They were wild olive branches. Who is the wild olive branches? The Gentiles. You see, the Gentiles were grafted in, into Christ, dear brethren. So, what happened? The Jewish uh, people were there. You see, the empty space came up. You see, to fill the 1,44,000. So, God gave the opportunity to the Gentiles to come inside this uh, olive tree. You see, verse 19 also, so, Sister Ramista, can you read verse 19 also? <clears throat> Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Ah, grafted. That, ah, that I may be grafted in. You see, grafted. So you can see here, see, natural olive tree was there, Israel, natural Israel nation was there. So some people, because of unbelief, what happened? Those branches were taken off. But, you see, the Gentiles uh, were like a wild olive tree. They had the faith of Abraham. So what happened? Uh, you see, they were, you see, uh, grafted. They were, uh, you see, joined uh, in this uh, natural olive tree. So now we have become the partakers uh, of the same olive tree, which is the nation of Israel, which is God's promise which is made to Abraham. Okay. Now, we were never under the Moses. We were never under the law. So, now, do you think that baptism of repentance is applicable to us? No. Why? Why it is not applicable to us, dear brethren? Because we were never under the law. You see, God had never given the law to the Gentiles. We were never under the law. Therefore, this baptism of repentance which John the Baptist gave to the nation of Israel is never applicable to us at all. Then, okay. Then, what is the meaning of baptism? What is the meaning of baptism to the Gentiles? Since 70 AD, you see, now what is the real meaning of baptism? Apostle Paul clearly tells the meaning of baptism in Romans 6, chapter, verse 3, 4, and 5. Let us read. Uh, Muna Sitter, please read Romans 6, chapter, 3, 4, and 5. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Ah, Therefore, see, here Apostle Paul gives the clear meaning of baptism. You see, he is not writing to the Jewish, he is writing to the Romans, the Gentile converts. He's saying, huh? Know you not? Don't you know, brethren? Not as many as of you are baptized into Jesus Christ. Why did you take baptism? The baptism you took was actually the baptism into his death. This is the real meaning of baptism. You see, dear brethren, the baptism means baptism into the death of Christ. Continue, sister. Huh? <clears throat> Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that the light as Christ was raised up from the death of death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Ah, you see, he clearly says that we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Then only can be in the likeness of his resurrection. Therefore, 
baptism is baptism into the death of Christ. Now, what is the meaning of death of Christ? You see, no, how to die in Christ? You see, dear brethren, you see, we all know Adam, you see, and we all know Jesus Christ. Okay, both of them died. Now, who can tell me why did Adam die? Tell me. Why did Adam die? Who can tell? Because of committing the sin. sin. Because of committing sin. Very good. Correct, sir. See, Adam died as a sinner. Correct. <clears throat> but why did Jesus die? For our sin. Yeah, for our sins. You see, Jesus died for a sinner. He never died as a sinner. To die as a sinner, to die for a sinner is very different. Jesus actually sacrificed his life and died, dear brethren. Jesus never, you say, died for his sin. Therefore, you remember, what was the condition of heart when Jesus killed baptism? It is given in Hebrews 10, chapter 7, verse. You see, clearly Jesus says that his will, his desire was to do the Father's will unto death. Read Hebrews 10, chapter 7, verse. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read Hebrews 10, 7? <clears throat> then said, I know I come in the bosom of the uh, bosom of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. He said, Lo, I come. When he was taking baptism, that was his last condition. Lo, I come, my Lord. I come to do thy will. Because in the volume of book is written me. You see, in the Bible, it is written about Jesus Christ. Jesus came to fulfill all the prophecies of God, which are written, you see, to do the God's will. This was actually the death of Christ, the sacrificial death of Christ, dear brethren. Therefore, you know, what does the Bible say? You see, the Bible says that you are dead and your life is buried in Christ. Isn't it? Read Colossians 3rd chapter. Colossians 3rd chapter verse 3. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 3. Romans 3, can you read? Uh, Colossians 3, 3. Can you tell me the verse again, brother? Col Colossians 3rd chapter. 3rd verse. <laughs> First. For ye are dead and dead. So your word, voice is not audible. Can you hear me now? Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Mm, see, you are dead. Dead means what? We are literally dead. No, we are living, but we are living a sacrificial life, daily dying in Christ. Therefore, it says, your life is hid with Christ, with Christ in God. This is the sacrificial death. This is the baptism into the death of Christ. Therefore, Apostle Paul, what did he say? You see, it is no longer I, love, I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Read Galatians 2.20. Muna sister, can you read Galatians 2.20? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live it, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ah, I am crucified with Christ. No longer I live it, but Christ that liveth in me. Therefore, dear brethren, baptism means baptism into the death of Christ. Living a sacrificial life as Christ did by walking in his footsteps. You remember, you know, what did Jesus say when he was almost supposed to die? He said, no, I have one more baptism to be baptized. How I may straighten till I accomplish it. Read Luke 12.50. <clears throat> Joel brother, can you read Luke 12.50? Luke 
but I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am I straining till it be accomplished. Ah, see, so Jesus had one more baptism to accomplish. What is that baptism? He had already taken baptism in the Jordan, water baptism. That was not the real baptism. That was just a symbol. The real baptism was actually to die in his death. To die a sacrificial death, dear brethren. That was actually the baptism which Jesus was very eager to finish it. Therefore, you remember, you know, the mother of James and John, they came, you see, she came and asked Jesus, no, Lord, please give my two sons to sit on the left hand and right hand. What did Jesus reply at that moment? Jesus replied, you don't know what you're asking, but uh, are you able to drink of the same cup which I'm going to drink? Are you be able to baptize with the baptism which I am? You see, baptized with here, Jesus was never speaking of the literal baptism. He was speaking of the baptism of his death. Read. Mark 10 chapter 35 to 38. Munna sister, can you read? Mark 10 chapter 35 to 38. And James and John, the son of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou soulest to for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? And they said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one, one on thy right hand and the other one thy left hand in the glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? See, Jesus put a question. Huh? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? You see, here, Jesus was not speaking of the literal baptism because this literal baptism, the disciples itself gave to many people. When they gave to many people, is it not so easy to take the baptism again? It was very easy, but Jesus was not speaking of the literal baptism. Literal baptism was just a symbol. So what was the actual baptism? Baptism into his death. Therefore, what John the Baptist baptism he gave, what Jesus took was totally different. <clears throat> John the Baptist gave it, but the meaning of the baptism which Jesus actually took was totally different. Therefore, you see, when uh, Jesus uh, came <clears throat> you see, to get baptism, what was the question that uh, John the Baptist asked? Uh, you see, let us read the verse. Matthew 3, Matthew 3, 13. Joel Buddha, can you read 13 and 14. Matthew 3rd chapter 13 and 14. They come at Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Mm, you see, what did uh... You see, John have to say, I have need to be baptized of thee, but thou comest to me. That means, John the Baptist was a sinner. But what about Jesus? Was Jesus a sinner? Was Jesus a sinner? Tell me. No. No. See, John the Baptist knew this one very well. Why? Because, you see, John the Baptist and uh, Jesus were cousin brothers. Who was the eldest one? <laughs> Jesus or John the Baptist? Who is the elder brother? John. John. Six months elder than Jesus Christ. Therefore, you see, when Elizabeth was conceived six months, uh, as soon as, uh, you see, uh, uh, she saw Mary, the child actually leaped uh, Inside a room, John the Baptist rejoiced to see Jesus. Therefore, they were cousin brothers. So, John the Baptist clearly know that Jesus was a holy, harmless, separate from sinners. That he was, you see, begotten by God's Holy Spirit. 
and was born through a virgin. Therefore, Jesus can never be a sinner. So he was giving the baptism for all the sinners. But as uh, you see, Jesus came, John the Baptist stopped him. He told, why are you taking? Because you are not a sinner like we are. You should, you should never take this baptism. Actually, I should be taking baptism from you. Because John the Baptist was a sinner like all the other people. Hence, he stopped Jesus. But what did Jesus say? What was the reply of Jesus? Read, brother. Verse 15. Uh, <clears throat> And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill, fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Ah, Jesus did not argue and sat there to explain everything to John the Baptist. Because if Jesus would have sat and explained everything to him, that is the sacrificial death, this is the immersion of his death, John the Baptist could have never understood this one. How the disciples themselves who were there with Jesus for three and a half years did not understand. And how will John the Baptist understand? So Jesus did not sit there and argue. He said, leave it now. Because by doing so, I will be fulfilling all righteousness. That means God has some laws. He has got some rules, regulations, some rules, some righteousness. I am doing this one to fulfill God's will. So let it be now. Therefore, John the Baptist gave baptism to Jesus. Therefore, dear brethren, the baptism which Jesus uh, took, which John the Baptist gave, totally different. Today, our Christians don't know the meaning of all these things. And everybody rush to take this baptism, thinking that it's a baptism of repentance, baptism for the forgiveness of sins, Baptism that they are turning towards God, living a new life. You see, dear brethren, we should actually study from the scriptures. You see, here a little, there a little. For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. Each and everything we need to study from the Bible. Then only we will get the answer for it. You know, what is the meaning of baptism? See, read one more verse. 1 Peter 3.21. <clears throat> Munar sister, can you read 1 Peter 3.21? The like figure where unto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. You see, what do you mean by baptism? Apostle Peter says, it is not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. It is not putting, cleansing away our, you see, Sins, it is not uh, cleansing of our sins. For the cleansing of our sins, what is required? The blood of Jesus, that is sufficient. The blood of Jesus is full power that it can cleanse us from all sins. There is no doubt at all. You see? But, <clears throat> you see, this uh, baptism is what? Uh, what is the meaning of it? Uh? But it is the answer of a good conscience towards God. God has done so many things. He has given us His Son. It's made a beautiful plan for the whole world. The resurrection of all the dead. A thousand year reign of Christ. Seeing and thanking God for all his wonderful mercy and grace to us. As, you see, offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. Dying with Jesus. This is the answer of a good conscience to them. You see, after listening to all this truth. You see, all the beautiful plan which is given in the Bible. Our conscience pricks us and pulls us and you see and it constrains us to give our body as a living sacrifice to God. That is consecration. That is baptism. A good conscience, you see, will always love to die for Christ. That is the meaning of baptism. Therefore, it clearly says it is not for the washing of our sins. It is not for the filth of our, you see, flesh at all. No, it is a good conscience towards God. You see, God has done so many things, so many beautiful stars, beautiful things are there. What God has created, the sun, moon, the mighty universe. So many intelligent people are there. God has called none of all these things, dear brethren. Very remote place, somewhere far in a mountain. You see, some uh, you see people who are unprofitable, which are of no use. 
God has called us. In that good conscience, O Lord, you have shown so much of grace and mercy to me. I will offer my body as a living sacrifice, doing thy will and die in Christ. That is the answer of a good conscience, dear brethren. This is the meaning of baptism. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, the symbol is also a beautiful thing. You see, what happens in the symbol? You see, a person is taken, you see, and uh, is immersed back, you see, again brought up, uh, you see, what is the meaning of it? Uh? What does Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what are the three conditions they have to do? Who can tell me? If any man wants to be my disciple, what they have to do? The first condition. Carry the Carry cross. The cross. Ah, deny themselves. First one. Deny. Second one, carry the cross. Correct? Huh? Third one, follow the footsteps of Jesus. You see, deny yourself. Surrender entirely to the person who is going to immerse you. You see, huh? then carry the cross. You see, immerse in water. Take responsibility for Christ's sake. Dead, be dead for him. You see, <clears throat> and follow him in. Rise up again and live a new consecrated life as a new creation. This is the meaning of baptism. You know, many people think that uh, in life only one time baptism has to be taken. No, dear brethren, one time properly it has to be taken. You might have taken thousand times. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't account in the God's sight at all. It is not accounted. But it has to be taken with a proper understanding of the truth in a proper way. That has to be taken correctly once. Not what you have taken once is the correct one. You know, the same thing happened in the church of Ephesus. They were all baptized. You know, where they were all baptized? They were all baptized for the baptism of repentance. And then Apostle Paul comes to the, you see, uh, the church. He asked them, okay, did you all get the Holy Spirit? They all tell, uh, we don't know more anything of the Holy Spirit. You know, Apostle Paul questions, uh, which baptism did you take? They all tell, we have taken a baptism of repentance. Apostle Paul corrects them. No, you have taken a wrong baptism. Then Apostle Paul again baptized everybody into Jesus Christ. Therefore, proper baptism has to be correctly taken. Without any doubt, without any hesitation. Or else, that baptism, what we have taken, is just uh, immersing in the water like a bird coming up again. That's it. That's a simple bath which, uh, is, does, which is nothing in God's sight. Read Acts 19, chapter 1, 2, and 3. Joel, brother, read. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper course, come to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you have ye received the Holy Ghost, sin ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? Ah, and they... You see, you said, Unto what were you baptized? Continue with that. Huh? And they said unto John baptism. Ah, they said unto John baptism. What is the meaning of John baptism? Continue. Huh? Then... Said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, underline saying, it. Underline, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Yes, that is correct, but that is not applicable to us. Continue. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should, should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ah, when they heard this, they were again baptized correctly. You see, therefore it says they were baptized, not again. 
You see, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. So this is the proper baptism that has to be properly administered and properly taken. It is not to be carelessly taken, dear brethren. You know, you see, Apostle Paul clearly corrects the Ephesus church, the entire Ephesus uh, church. Uh, they were rebaptized uh, correctly. <coughs> Therefore, dear brethren, you see, baptism, uh, you see, has to be taken in a proper way, in a proper meaningful way. You see, if we take uh, without anyone understanding it, uh, that doesn't make sense at all, dear brethren. You see, it is like, uh, you see, uh, thinking that we are married to somebody, hell, uh, somebody, and while they, they themselves uh, don't know that uh, we are uh, engaged or uh, we are married to them, what use does it make? Like, for example, huh? <coughs> I might claim that uh, I am married to uh, Mr. X uh, or Sister X, Y, Z. But, Sister, a, if X, Y, Z doesn't acknowledge me as uh, her husband, what is the use of me claiming uh, to be the husband of uh, X, Y, Z? It is no use at all. Therefore, the person has to accept it. That means Jesus has to accept it. Christ has to accept it. Dear brethren. Therefore, Ephesus Church was corrected. Proper understanding in a proper way. Immersion is very important. Therefore, you know what did Jesus say? Matthew 28, 19. What did Jesus say? Go and teach to all nations. Baptize them in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Read Matthew 28, 19. Our can you read? Matthew 28, 19 and 20, sister. 28, 19, and 20. Ah. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Ah, you see? What, do you, what did Jesus say? Go and teach. Correct answer. First thing, what is that one? Huh? Teach. Teach what? Teach the Bible. Teach the truth. Teach what things? You see, making them to be disciples of Christ. Teach them that the soul dies. Teach them that the hell is a place of dead. It's not a torment place. Hell is the grave. Teach them there is a resurrection for everybody in the thousand years. Teach them that there is a worldly salvation for everybody in the thousand years. Teach them our God is not three in one or one in three. Our God is only one God. Teach them that the Lord's memorial supper has to be taken only once a year, not whenever we want. <coughs> you see, teach them these and many more truths in the Bible, dear brethren. Teach them and baptize them in whose name? Name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the meaning of the name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit? Name of the Father means what? God. Name of the Son means Jesus. Name of the Holy Spirit means Holy Spirit. So, is, is, this is what Jesus uh, said. Uh, huh? Everybody thinking this is literal, they use the same word for baptizing. Okay? Actually, you know, what is the meaning of name in the Bible? We need to search. <coughs> like, for example, if I say, Robin is not good, now what does it mean? If I say, Robin is not good, what does it mean actually? Tell me. What does it actually mean? Does it mean that uh, the spelling Robin is not correct? Tell me. Uh, no. Uh, then what does it mean? Correct. Sir. Then what does it mean? Robin no, is not the correct. Character. Character. Robin's character is not good. Very good. That's what Jesus said. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit means immerse them, make them disciples. So that they are immersed uh, completely in the character of the Father. They are immersed completely in the character of the Son. They are immersed completely in the character of the Holy Spirit. This is the real meaning of baptism. Therefore, you know, the word baptism actually comes from the Greek word baptizo. That means immerse. Completely dissolve them in water. Not only in water but in character of Jesus, dear brethren. This is the real meaning of baptism. <coughs> okay? You send the notes. Please go through the notes. 
okay we will be sending the youtube link also please go through any doubts any suggestions or any you see questions you have you can please ask <clears throat> anybody any questions any doubts your brother no question brother munaster any questions no brother romester amar brother any questions um i would like to know that so then we need to take the back baptism again that's what the church of ephesus did sister when they realized that uh, what they actually took uh, was a different one they corrected it so is a responsibility of every true christians to properly immerse themselves into death of christ okay thank you that's a, that's a symbol <clears throat> you see like for example <clears throat> wedding correct no i don't know how mm -hmm. do they conduct wedding in your place that for christians here we have a wedding ring you see and we have a registrar where the marriage is registered okay now imagine if uh, i like somebody okay and i am in relationship with that uh, uh, sister okay and uh, she is my wife i claim to uh, claim her to be my wife but i am not uh, you see publicly properly symbolize this one now i may accept uh, that this is my marriage i may accept that i am married but do you think that everybody will accept uh? no no that is the same way with god see god expects us to do it in a proper way where we where he can accept it uh. Therefore, Matthew seven chapter twenty and twenty one. What did Jesus say? Not everybody who says Lord, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Correct, no? Yes. No, just just by mentioning Lord, oh Lord Jesus, does it make uh, our uh, salvation to be finished? No. <clears throat> you see, therefore, doing the will of the God is very important. There only Jesus gives us. He that does the will of my Father, only he shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore. it is a small thing to properly immerse ourselves so we should never hesitate for that one see when when we realize that we have committed a mistake the proper attitude of a good child of god is that they correct it then and there itself that's very very appreciated by god isn't it correct no sir yes brother like for example we were all taking the lord supper when how many times in a year you were taking or when you were taking it's um, it used to be every month once a month very good but once you realize from the bible did you still continue to take that one no no so we corrected it that is the good wheat you see we studied the three other subject the difference between wheat and tares tares don't agree but the wheat is surrendered to god that is the main thing jesus surrendered to god he was holy he was harmless separate from sinners there was no need for him to take this baptism but he was setting a example i am the head of the church i have taken the immersion so you also symbolize it properly that is very very important okay sir <clears throat> okay brother thank you so much any other questions anybody munar sir Amar brother, no. sorry, I did not ask you. Amar brother, any questions? No question. Okay. Munna sir, any questions? No brother. Okay, thank you. Then uh, in the end, uh, Romi sister, can you pray? We'll finish with a word of prayer. Okay, brother. Pavitra Parmeshwar Pita, me to pala thane baat din saan so. अनि तपाई को कृपा अनि अनुग्रहले प्रभु आज हामीले नयाँ विषय अनि हेर्न पायौ सुन्न पायौ अनि प्रभु हामी तपाईलाई धेरै धन्यवाद दिन चाहन्छौ प्रभु यो अवसरको लागि अनि साच्चै नै अनि यो विषयहरु नयाँ हुँदै जाँदा प्रभु अनि धेरै वटा जिज्ञासाहरु हाम्रो मनमा अनि पहिले देखि बसेका ती 
गलत प्रैक्टिस और लाइफ अपनी प्रभु अने त्यों करा रहे हैं प्रभु ले अपने उथल पुथल लाए अपने तपाईं को हाथ मार समर्पण करते सो रब विशेष करी कनो आमी जति जाना लिए आज यो सुनने मौका पाए का संपिता हमी तपाला धन्यवाद दे दसो अने तपाईं जस्तो जानो उनसे प्रभु अने साथ से नहीं अने हमें ले आप वाले सही प्रभु अनि तपाईं मा दिए र प्रभु अनि तपाईं जस्तो जानुन्छ तेस्ते जीवन हामी प्रत्येक ले सहायता गर्नुस और एक दिन नया अनि तपाईं को इच्छा अनुसार कुनो सहायता गर्नुस हमें राजू प्रदर्शन को निम्ति धन्य बात दिन सहान सहु अनि जुन मेहनत वाले कौनो बाई कुछ है तो सभी कुरान रोड़े से प्रभु ये उटा असल फल हमें उन्हें सको मने रखने हमें प्रार्थना कर सों ये सभी कुराला हमें तपाईं में समर्पण कर सों अने तपाईं को कुरुपाले हमें सम सभी लाई प्रभु फेरी बनी बीट कार पहरा सुनने सीखने बोलने र प्रभु और उलाई बनी प्रभु बोर्डे करे को देखने ती आवश्यर